Welcome to the first episode of Babbling Rooks. Actually, a retake because we tried to do this last week and uh, there was some technical issues that I think was my fault in trying to get the actual recording audio part to go. So we had an hour and or so of us playing this game with uh, no audio. So we're trying again. Uh, <laughs> The, this is a new series that uh, I'm doing with uh, my friend Kyle Piercy. Hello. Uh, this is modeled after um, this video game critic whose name is Yahtzee Croshaw. He does this weekly series called Let's Drown Out with his friend Gabe Morton, uh, where they talk mainly about video game culture while they play some random video game. And I thought that I would try to do the same thing, except uh, have my own spin on it, uh, the idea is that Kyle and I have questions for each other, and uh, we're going to ask questions that some of which are designed for both of us to answer, and some of which are designed for just the other person to answer. These questions aren't screened ahead of time, uh, even though we did a bunch of questions last week. There's only one that I'm going to that we're going to repeat, which no, is that's the, a lie. I chose one that I wanted to kind of tweak and repeat. Okay, that's cool. So there's going to be a couple questions that are repeats. That's fine. Uh, they do it. We're going to. <laughs> We're going to do that uh, while playing this game that's called the Battle of Lits. Uh, this is a, traditionally a board game, but we're using an online uh, thing to play it. And the way that the game works is that there's this grid of... Um, Are you ready for me? Clicking on accept. Yeah. There we go. There's this grid of pieces, and we have the opportunity to, to play these four LITS types of uh, Tetris pieces onto the board. Uh, here you can see that I am X and Kyle is O, and the idea is that we want to protect our pieces. The, uh, the rules are that all the pieces have to be connected, no two pieces of the same type are allowed to border each other, and you're not allowed to create a situation with a two by two grid. The first person also has the, the, I'm sorry, the second person also has the option after seeing what the first person did to uh, change sides so that if they feel that the first turn is too advantageous for the other person, then they can say, no, you're not going to do that move. Uh, I just did that move and now you have to react to it. So right now, they just protect, right? Like I, I need to try to make, I need to try to get my exes to, I need to keep my exes. Right. No, you, you want to you want to get rid of your exes. <laughs> you want to come up as many exes as true. possible. So we're going to attempt to play a bunch of rounds of this game while we're also answering questions for each other um, and of each other. And we're also eating some cheese and crackers <laughs> while we're doing this too because I did not eat a whole lot today. Uh, so my uh, my first question as an introduction to this whole thing while I think about my move here too is. Um, what's the reason that you're interested in this? Uh, why do you want to do this? And what are you hoping to achieve? What are your expectations? Things like that. Um, I would say that my overall goal is to use this series as a means for me to keep in touch um, over the next 12 to 18 months because I'm going to be leaving in March for... hello. Um, leaving in March for Costa Rica, doing a mission project for that time period, and I know I'm going to be missing a lot of stuff in the States, um, I'm going to only be able to visit basically every couple of months, and I know I'm going to be missing a lot, like, friends' babies being born, and people getting married, or things like that, and so, you know, one, I wanted to use this as a means of staying connected to the States, and staying connected to... Um, just my circle of friends and the same culture that I'm used to with my circle of friends here. Uh, but two, I wanted to, to do this as a means of learning more about Mendel. Um, and just kind of bonding with Mendel in a way that we have done over the past four and a half years. Something like that? Yeah, something like that. Um, since Mendel used to be my percussion instructor. Um, how many did you cover up? Oh, weak. Uh, two. Just two. Okay. Um, and so I want to be able to use that as an opportunity to get closer to Mendel and also learn how to play all these crazy <laughs> board games that he has a list of. Or video games. Yeah, you know, both and, both and. So it'll be fun. I'm excited. 
and also deal with it. Okay. So I, I want to do this um, for a couple of reasons. Uh, one is uh, I, I really like the idea of the Drown Out series and it just being this babbling space uh, for two people that uh, have generated a following. I, I don't really have any <clears throat> expectations when it comes to a following exactly. I don't, I don't really think that what I have to say um, is necessarily valuable, but I, and I guess that's the other piece of this is that I, I, I feel like, um, I, I feel like my opinions, I, I have opinions about things, but I, I hate being really pushy about, about my opinions or expressing those opinions without a context of which I'm asked. I, I'm not one to be very forward with my opinions unless, um, people ask that of me or unless it's a, a topic that I I have say in for say the betterment of a program like the marching band program like mm -hmm. I, I'm very vocal about how I feel about the way that the program here runs and and uh, will defend those sorts of things and, and I'm not afraid to express my opinion right. but my own sort of personal beliefs or my own uh, my own ideas about random things or about important things uh, it is not something that I, I try to express as much as I try to listen to other people. And I don't always succeed at that because sometimes I have a tendency to babble, but I, I like to at least try to believe that I, I listen more than I express. And a part of me thinks that that's not entirely healthy to feel, um, to, to have some of these ideas or thoughts bottled in. So this is a way for me to try to get some of that stuff out, but in a way that is voluntary. It's not something that I'm going to pressure anybody to listen to or, or have any, again, any illusions that people will actually tune in that we're going to get a huge following out of, but will hopefully be something that maybe if for the people that are interested in what I'm about and also maybe quirkily into um, some of these kind of games and might be interested in them, will have an avenue where they can maybe be entertained for an hour or so. And so... That's really where that comes from. And... And middle sucks. So I'm not doing that. That's okay, I don't want to play there either. I didn't think that you did, that's why I decided to go there. Mm -hmm. so, so, let's do a... Let's do a question... Let's do a question. Yeah, let's do. Let's just do a question. One of the questions for. Well, I guess your question for both of us. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so this is the question that I asked last time that I wanted to kind of tweak. Okay. Um, is there a defining moment you had in which you felt like a New Orleanian? <coughs> a defining moment in which I felt like a New Orleanian. Yes. Like, is there like a moment? That you can say, like, this is when I felt like a true New Orleanian. I don't think... just a transplant. I don't, I don't think that my answers really changed. How is that different from how you tried to ask that question last time? Um, I kind of limited you to, like, what was, like, the one experience. And I said you can't choose your, uh... Right. Saint Super Bowl parade story. Right. I... I is there a defining moment? I... <clears throat> I, I think that's that. That's still a pretty tough question to answer because, um, that's still a pretty tough question to answer because I, I still think that the answer is no. I, my absorption. There, there are different aspects of my absorption into into New Orleans that I feel. Um, were gradual. It's not like, uh, I mean, I, I, I immediately fell in love with the city uh, in some way. There, the, the culture was unlike any, the, the culture is unlike anything that I've ever experienced before in, in any other place that I've lived uh, or any, uh, even other places that I've visited. The, the kind of culture here from, and the diversity of that culture and the people and the food and all those things. And that struck, that, that struck me pretty immediately um, that, 
that struck me pretty immediately how that culture uh, just appeals to me. It, it is, there, there are a lot of people and that appeals to me. Oh, I didn't think that you could still do that. Maybe that sucks. That's the reason I tried to do that. Um, and uh, and the touristy kind of culture here that, that lends to a lot of diversity, I think, helped. Mm -hmm. Because when I used to play poker once a week, I, I played poker once a week for about four years here, maybe, maybe a little bit longer. And it sticks out to me how, how in all that time, there was never a point on the weekend where I was, every weekend there was always someone from out of town. There was always somebody new to that, that you could talk to. There were, there were plenty of regulars that are there every day and, mm -hmm. and doing their thing, but there was always a situation of out of town people and those out of town and, and the, the nature of the touristy thing here make, because New Orleans is such a touristy hotspot, that's what makes that possible. And that aspect of New Orleans I really like. Um, defining moment. I don't, I don't think so. I, I, but I, I think that the question is also misleading because I don't know if I even now think that I'm a New Orleanian exactly. I, I don't know what my future is here. I, I, don't, I don't know whether or not this is a place where I feel like I could settle. I, I think that it's possible but I think that that's going to be defined a little bit more by, <clears throat> by a lot of different variables. I, I don't think that I ever feel connected to an individual place. That, that's not really my sort of deal. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I definitely identify with New Orleans more than I identify with where I grew up in Pennsylvania. And I identify it a little bit more than I, than I do uh, Eugene, Oregon. But, uh, but I, I still miss California. And I still, I still, even though I, I don't think that uh, I could ever live in Southeast Pennsylvania anymore, uh, I still identify a lot with it and a lot with the people there. And so I think that the answer might be more that I, I don't know if I feel like I'm a definitive anywhere. I'm a, I'm a little bit, I see myself as kind of nomadic, even okay. though I've lived here for as long as I have. And so. Okay. Hmm. What about you? Um, I actually do feel like it, like my defining moment that I felt like I became a true New Orleanian was um, when I moved to my place that I live at now in St. Charles um, because I changed zip codes mm -hmm. and so when I when I saw that when I like realized oh I'm not just a student like I'm not just a Tulane student anymore I'm someone who's a part of the city who's connected to the culture who who knows more about it than just your average four-year undergrad degree student. Um, I think that was when I just felt like a connection to the city that I hadn't felt before. Yeah, I could see that. And I could see why my situation is different from that because I didn't come into the city as a student. Yeah, that makes sense. Because there was definitely a different transition for me in, in being in Eugene in my master's degree as a versus when I decided to stay in Eugene for a while, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can understand that. That took away the move I wanted to make. Well, sucks. You better play smart. Because you're about to lose. I don't know about that. Uh, why don't you ask me the, your my first point your, of question? Your first point of question. Why you think about first singular question? Why you think about how you're gonna lose? Um. I think that's the only. Thing what I'm is gonna one non-traditional thing <clears throat> on your bucket list? The non-traditional thing on my bucket list. Yeah, like, not but like a... I guess, what, what do you consider traditional? I don't know, people are always like, oh, I want to go somewhere, or I want to do this. Like, what's... So, <laughs> my example would be, because you know my life, and my 
potential anger with buying a house with a shower head that is below my the top of my head. Uh-huh. Like so, my non traditional thing on my bucket list is making sure that I buy a house, like buying a house with a shower head that comes above my head. But is that a bucket list thing? Yeah, it's just like a, it's like yeah, it's like a non traditional bucket list thing. Like I could say like, oh, well, I want to go do things or whatever, but. I guess I still. I guess the the an easy answer is that I, uh, I. I still want to visit Alaska because then that means that I've set foot in all fifty states in the United States. Uh-huh. Uh, and granted, some of those have been through drum corps buses and and all that. But uh, although I'm a lot more traveled than I was uh, mm-hmm. when I first moved to New Orleans, because I travel a lot more. I tra- I travel way more. Um, since having moved to New Orleans and I ever did in Oregon or living in Pennsylvania, but <clears throat> I think that that still counts. I, I, I find it, I, I have this goal of, of making the trek to Alaska and saying, being able to say that I visited all 50 states. Now, does that work? <laughs> yeah, that works. <laughs> I'm trying to think if there's anything else non traditional on a bucket list. Um, there was a there was an old professor of mine in my undergraduate that had this uh, had hit this bucket list that he wanted to become famous enough to become a wrong answer on a the music part of the GRE the the, uh, the GRE used to have music a music uh, section mm-hmm. uh, but that eventually got abandoned because too many music schools decided that they just wanted to do their own tests as opposed to rely upon the national tests. Gotcha. And some of those te- some of those answers some of the test questions were multiple choice and my this one professor at my sc- at my school who was a composition person said that he wanted to become famous enough to be able to be a wrong answer on a test <laughs> on the national GR music GRE test I thought that was pretty funny nice I think you were saying something about losing this game and I, I don't think that's actually happening yeah you know i realized about like three turns ago that i forgot to block that earlier so <laughs> i was just like well I'm probably gonna lose this so yeah oh, i don't think you're gonna do that i didn't i couldn't do it now huh uh, i thought you were gonna do an s or just something i guess i did yeah, it, it didn't yeah, matter yeah it didn't matter it was all the same so return Whatever, Mendel. <laughs> you get one one you're gonna lose the rest of them. I'm gonna propose a rematch because you you need one after that ego blowing um, thing there. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I accept this game. Good. Everyone has agreed. I can mute my sound by clicking there, but I think I like the doorknob. <laughs> Who am I? Did I go first last time, or did you? You went first last time for the first time. Yeah, I know. I saw that. I didn't want to remark on it, because, I mean, everybody who's listening will know the difference. (laughs) Every game that we tried to do last week, Kyle ended up being the first player. I I bet you're going to be the first player from now on. It might be that. I don't know. Uh, Let me give you your first unique question. Okay. What was your least favorite class in middle school and or high school? Ooh. Middle school and or high school, um, or or you could do both. It doesn't matter to me. Um. Wow. I mean, I guess I would. I guess I would just choose high school because I took a lot more variety of classes in high school rather than in middle school. Um. Least favorite. Oh, um, I had to take, we, we had, so we were on the semester system, uh-huh. um, but one of our courses was a combination of government and economics. Okay. And we, it got, it gets split, it got split into quarters. So like one quarter we would be in government or economics and then the other quarter we would flip. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, the government portion of that was my least favorite because Why is that? the professor was this tenure sports coach and he just <laughs> didn't care about anything. So for one of the tests, he was just like, okay, like the day before he was like, okay, this is everything that's going to be on the test. You just have to write it down and like define it. And I was like, are you kidding me? Like, is this supposed to be like a joke? 
And yeah, I just I, I didn't appreciate whenever I had professors who didn't care to teach. Um, or even when I had professors who didn't care to teach but I still learned something, mm-hmm. it was I found it beneficial. So like I had one class that was like uh, business tech essentials. And it was basically like a learn how to use uh, Word and Excel and PowerPoint and all these things, but use them like fluently. Mm-hmm. And our professor didn't care, and we just like had like a book that we went along through. So I just like jumped ahead. My friend and I just kind of jumped ahead through several sections at a time. And it was really neat having to learn all those things. I should probably move. <laughs> um, I am next. I had a social studies teacher in middle school that spent the entire class period reading uh, reading directly from the book uh, all the material that we, we were supposed to go over. Sucks. And he would occasionally change a word or two as he was reading, but we were all following along in the book, so <laughs> <laughs> it was just absurd. We knew what was going on. Nice. <laughs> so. Are you just going to marry me the whole time? I had a thought about that. Uh, I will say, to counter that, though, I, I know what my favorite class was in high school. Sure, what was that? Um, I had I took a bunch of AP classes, and I'll never forget my AP language class because one, I thought I was pretty good at language and language skills anyway, and so I didn't really think I needed. Um, I didn't think that it was gonna like challenge me in any sort of way because I was when I scored the highest. Uh, no, I took the back. I scored the highest in science on the ACT. That was the thing that I scored the second highest on on my ACT, and I just didn't really see any room for improvement there. And I'll never forget I had Dr. Matthews. If you called her anything other than Dr. Matthews, because she had just gotten her doctorate, <laughs> and so like she was like super picky. And now anywhere she goes, like my mom works as a customer service rep at Comcast, and she gets her cable there. And anytime she comes in, like, if somebody calls her Miss Matthews, she'll correct them there at the cable company and be like, it's Dr. Matthews. But you know what? She earned it. So, I mean, I don't really blame her. Like, yeah, it's kind of a overpowering move, but also, like, whatever. You need to um, establish your status. Yeah, right? So, <laughs> yeah. But she was fantastic. Uh, I think she showed me what, like, pushing all of your students at their individual level meant. Because mm. um, I had a lot of classes, I mean, since I was valedictorian, like, I had a lot of classes <coughs> that I just kind of breezed through and didn't really care about, and I wasn't ever really pushed, because the teachers would spend most of the time pushing other students. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that was the first time that she pushed all of her students to a certain, like, level of, she didn't care if you were a terrible student, but you push yourself to, like, you know, two standard deviations higher than what you should. Um as long as everybody reached that two standard deviations above where they should be, like, she was happy with it. And so, it was pretty fantastic. That's cool. Yeah. Alright. I'm gonna think about this, so I don't want to hear any of your questions right now. <laughs> give me give me the collective, your second collective question. Okay. Um, wow, wow, wow. Um, I don't know if I want to do that. Okay, well, we'll do that anyway. There we go. Uh, my second collective question is... What is your favorite aspect of Mardi Gras culture? It's the... Uh It's the idea that 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 it's a, the idea of acceptance. I think that probably my favorite story that I've never personally witnessed, but I've heard, and, and it, it 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 resonates a lot with me, is how there's in, in a lot of in a lot of say corporate culture, uh, everybody's always or, or any kind of culture that that's a public space and everybody's always under a microscope and regardless of whether they're on the clock or not and so if you were going to if a ceo of a major multi-billion dollar international corporation was going to do something questionable in his or her own time then 
that's something that would be spotlighted regardless of whether that had anything to do with the actual business because character and personality and charisma is something that's important in that sort of culture. Mm-hmm. It, it, there's a lot with stocks and all that sort of business. And there was a story of how, um, a, a common story of how here, at some point during Mardi Gras, there was a CEO of a major company down here that was dressed in drag and just parting it up on the street as a part of the uptown New Orleans culture, uh, uptown Mardi Gras culture. And nobody about it and I about it because they said that's, that's what you should do in Mardi Gras. Mardi Gras is a, a time for you to, to feel free to ex- express and, and express those things and, and, and go a little wild. And the, the impression of Mardi Gras from on, on the outside is, is, is one that uh, generally is seen as reckless. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that it can be, but that's not, that's not really what I think of when I think about the message of Mardi Gras as a whole. Yeah. The Mardi Gras thing as a whole to me is more, this is an opportunity for you to, to be yourself or be something different in a way that you wouldn't normally be. Mm-hmm that you don't feel judgment about. There's also a, a lot of community as it relates to Mardi Gras for me. There's any time on the route, this hasn't happened every year, but there have been a lot of times on the route where where just you start talking to the people around you and then they start offering you food or alcohol or whatever right. else. You just get those stories and and you, you hear some of the crazy stories of some of the some of the people that 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 the, the people that collect beads that have collected beads their entire life um, and have attics full of beads that are that are those collectibles from mu- that have how many muses slippers do they uh, sh- how many muses shoes do they have or slippers or how many of the coconuts do they have and things oh, yeah. like that and, and, and how important those collectibles and how personal those those can, things can be and, and I, I think that that's pretty fascinating I, I think that that th- there's something that resonates for me about that I yeah. think that the the strength of that that good time feel good sort of thing is just there, there's nothing else like it and mm-hmm. and something that that I think is an important lesson for uh, a, a culture in the U.S. anyway that I think consistently always takes itself too seriously and yeah. and Mardi Gras allows you to to not take yourself so seriously or take things so seriously and and creates a great sense of community. So, neat. Yeah, you kind of stole my answer, because <laughs> because <laughs> community was was mine. Um, <clears throat> just because you, you're right. You do strike up conversations with people that one you're never probably gonna see again, unless you go to the same spot for Mardi Gras every year for the same parades. In which case, you right. will see them. If everybody has their regular spots, right. Then. Um, yeah, it's just such a sense of community because you, I don't know, for me, it's really cool to see families, and it's really cool to see just, you get all of your kids out there, you get, like, the whole family, grandparents, everything, generational, and everybody has fun. Even if they're just sitting down and just watching the folks go by, everybody seems to have fun, and you see people sharing even like people complete strangers like yeah like what you said with food or alcohol or things like that um i remember one year when we were marching in rex it was freaking cold and (laughs) there was this group there was like this family who had like these like like barbecue chicken and burgers and everything and they were along the parade on saint charles and they were like you guys look so cold and tired. You want some food? And literally everyone in the baseline and, like, the majority of us elsewhere were just like, yes. Yes, we would like some barbecue chicken, please. And it was pretty fantastic. Um, so, seeing things like that, the only, the only time that I don't see, like, a sense of shared community during Mardi Gras is during Muses. Um, particularly whenever there are shoes just because everybody, everybody wants a shoe, and then people suck, and, and they'll like, and they'll steal shoes from small children. Oh, yeah, it's I like, know, why? I know that that's happened, but um, but but there are a lot of there are other parades that have that sort of thing too. The the spear or the coconut for various parades. I mean, there are just so many coconuts at Zulu though that like. 
I guess so, right? Why, why steal a coconut when you could just literally reach out and grab one? Right. Whereas, like, muses, there are only so many to use. Yeah, that's true. I, I've, I've pretty much determined that I'm never going to get a muse shoe because I'm not aggressive enough and I'm also not a kid uh, on a parent's shoulder and or have the inside connections or am an attractive young female. You just gotta, you gotta, <laughs> well, so, okay, but think about all of those and then you have to wonder why Richard gets so many shoes every Well, that's year. because Richard is Richard, but he, he has the personality and, and isn't afraid to go, to go really loud and, and, and just off his rocker that that sticks out. Yeah, that's right? right. Like I'm I'm not a person that tries to, to, to really stick out in Mardi Gras. That that I, I just enjoy being a different version of who I am. So yeah. I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be Richard. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I don't even know how to explain that other than just using that. Whatever. I got my I got my one shoe and I'm content. Cause I lied. I use my I use my pastor. My pastor had like recently gotten had a baby and so he made a little sign, it's like a little shoe for my little girl. <laughs> um, and he had he got his two shoes. He got one for his wife and one for his daughter. And he's like, "Yeah, I'm done. We're we're leaving. You want to use the sign?" And I was like, "Yes, yes, I do." And I got one. Like he left it like maybe four floats before the end, and I got one before the end. That was fantastic. That's great. Um, so whatever. I'll I'll lie to get my shoe. <laughs> I won't take it from another person, but I will lie to get one. <laughs> oh, poop. That was a good move. Thanks. I I I was impressed with it. That's uh, I'm, as we play this game more. It, I I feel like it's I feel like it's a lot less about covering up the most pieces possible and defending the squares Your that you pieces, yeah, yeah. Just defending the squares that you don't want to have taken, and and finding the right balance between. Potential sacrifice versus what what you can do long term. Right. So. Um. Here's my collective question: How did you get involved in the marching activity? Hmm. Um. I mean, I was in concert band all throughout middle school, and so when I got to high school, you could, we did marching band in the spring, since we were semesterly, it, it was very similar to here, like we did marching band in the spring, and you did concert or orchestra in the fall. I'm sorry, I got those mixed up. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> you do marching in the fall when it makes sense because you have football teams playing and then you do concert <laughs> or orchestra in the spring. That is what I meant to say. And I don't know, I just wanted to be, I wanted to continue to be a part of that culture. And I realized very quickly that I didn't understand that culture whatsoever during my first, <laughs> uh, like they made us say, like, I am auditioning for Snare. And I only wanted to audition for Snare because I didn't want to play bass because I thought they were like super heavy and I just like I was intimidated by it um, and the same for tenors like I was just super intimidated by tenors but I couldn't play trad at the point at that point uh, so I was like well I'm just gonna stick it out and try to tweak my left wrist as much as possible Ooh. but did you just join did you just join because it was a continuation of what you did in Yeah, it was, yeah, somewhere? like, I mean, I mean, I've always been a very musical person, and so I wanted to, to continue in whatever way possible, because I, I enjoyed playing percussion, and I wanted to, to continue that, yeah, it was definitely a continuation thing, and then, I think that year that I joined was the last year that ESPN showed DCI Finals on, on live television. Oh, really? Yeah. Because I remember watching it. Before they moved to the theater? or Yeah, before they moved to the theater. Huh, okay. It was, it was still on ESPN. Mm -hmm. And I remember watching it, and I was like, yeah, I want to I want to be that cool. Because I remember, and that's why SCD is still my favorite. I mean, there's some reason why SCD is my favorite. Uh, but seeing the SCD symbols make a huge V at the end, and it was just like, 
that's it. Like I want to, I want to have that kind of showmanship in my schooling <coughs> or what have you in my drumming. You win this game. Yep. Get out of here. So for those of you that don't know, if if there is a tie, then the last person that plays a piece is the one that breaks the tie because this game doesn't believe in ties. <laughs> <laughs> so I, mean, I guess it makes sense. Sort of. Here's Mac. Nice. You suck. <laughs> So, yeah, that answers your question, yeah? Yes. Okay. What about you? Is this a collective? Let's propose. Did, who typically proposes the rematch, you or me? Typically you. Propose a rematch. Let's see if that makes me go first. Okay. I'm expected on a table. Uh, my story is... No, you're still going first. Ah. <laughs> it was a fluke. I'll try next time. My story is um, I was in concert band in middle school for fifth and sixth grade, I think. Let me think. <clears throat> I, I don't remember exactly. Um, but in either, it was either fifth and sixth grade or just fifth grade. And after that, the, the band director who I had, who I liked, um, died. And uh, I, I, I think I tried to be in band, concert band after that in middle school, but the person who was in charge of the 7th and 8th group was uh, not really into percussion. So the percussion stuff was really easy. He tried to get me to play other instruments because he didn't like percussion. And he, anytime that the percussion would be in concert band, they would have really easy parts and he would have them typically not play at all during the whole rehearsal except for big runs at the end because he thought of the percussion as noise. And that, that bothered me. I, I, I uh, started to become more focused on choir and some theater stuff, but what am I, am I oh, yeah. Um, and so I, so I, I, I didn't actually have any intention of joining marching band at all in high school. There was a, uh, the, the high school concert band did a concert at the, uh, the high school mark, the high school concert band did a concert for the middle school. We went down to the middle school and played a concert for them. Okay. And um, I knew, I was good friends with this guy named Carl, and his older sister played the glockenspiel in the concert band. And I had never, I had a lot of piano background, but I didn't, I never played a melodic uh, percussion. percussion instrument. And because I vaguely knew her uh, from hanging out with, Co with Carl, <coughs> um, her name was Gwen, I, I, I think I, I, I shook her hand or said something after, and I said, "That looks pretty cool. Uh, maybe I, maybe I can do that someday or something." And uh, then over the summer, this was when I was in eighth grade, when Carl and I were both in eighth grade. And then over the summer, I get a call from her, from Gwen, because she was the drum major of the marching band, and that the, that next year. And she said, "Hey, do you want to join the marching band?" And uh, I said, "Yeah, sure. I'll check it out and let's see what happens." The marching band was about 30 people, um, and I was the only person in the pit. Uh, I, I played a, a glockenspiel in the pit. Did you march glockenspiel? No. Uh, the, we, I did for parades, but, but for the shows, I just, I just, marched, I, I just played on the sideline. Mm -hmm. um, the, the band director at the time was the same director of the 7th, 8th grade group, and he, he didn't really, he wasn't a great teacher. He, he was a trumpet player that, that thought of the marching band thing as kind of a chore. Mm -hmm. And it, it wasn't really that inspiring. It didn't really get me, to, get me, get me terribly interested. Um, then in the next year, but I stuck with it because I, 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 I gained some friends in the band and... Uh, 
and I wanted to. I was pretty interested in being in the drum line, and and, and specifically in playing uh, in playing quads. Although at the time that was uh, they were trip toms, um, because I'm that old. Nice. And uh, the 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 next year, there was a new director that came in. He was a trumpet player from who graduated. I think he might have graduated from Westchester, and his name was Ralph. And he brought in a friend of his to be the motivational teacher person named Tracy. And she's really the first person that took that whole marching band culture at my high school and turned it into a life lesson and taught us about how to work hard and how to have fun working hard and to have pride in what we did, like that, that typical band geekery with pride sort of deal. Like she, she sold it to us pretty hook, lining, and center, sinker, and we all bought it. And, and because of the kind of pride and, and, and dedication that we had because of her, uh, we ended up being, even though we were a 25, 30 piece band, we ended up winning our division one of those years, and, and we marched everywhere and, and earned a lot of respect from other groups that, that uh, even though we were really small in some ways. I, I remember really distinctly this time when we were at a rehearsal in the high school and uh, this guy who was close to our, our, our field, um, maybe I don't want to do that yet. I guess I will. This guy that was close to our field uh, was in our sight line and along with two other people and then he 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 took off the his his outer clothes or whatever and he was naked underneath he streaked us in the, in the middle of the rehearsal and we went into this commotion for a good 10 15 seconds or so <coughs> and it threw chaos into our rehearsal a little bit Mm -hmm. And Tracy just went on the microphone and, and called us to attention, and we all immediately stopped. Like, silence on the field. Because we, because that was what we were, I guess, somewhat programmed to do, but also because we had that sort of pride of attention was attention. Mm -hmm. And there was, there was it, we, it meant that we were going to focus in. And, and that sort of lesson is... Uh, it's not something I, I necessarily completely believe in exactly anymore, but that's definitely an ideal that needs to be balanced with the, the individualism. Mm -hmm. And she was the one that made me realize that, that, that made me passionate about it, that, that made me realize that I could find something out of, out of this whole thing. And I, I remember thinking at the time even that uh, I, I wish that someday that some I wish that someday that might be something that I can do. Well, she was the she was the the primary instigator of all that. Gotcha. Neat. So. Um. How many people in your life do you feel truly knows the real you? knows the real me in what way like there there are several people who know different aspects of me that that are the real me like mm. some somebody who knows all of me all of you and or uh, uh, the you that it that gets that gets to the heart of the real you okay so maybe not like every little thing but most of me. Right. Um, is that like how many people or who? How many? How many? I'm going to listen now as I see it. There's you. <laughs> there's you. Uh, there's Tori. And Sam. BJ. Carell. Back up. Yeah. I want to say six. 
Okay, six would be a good number. I can't really think of anybody else who would who would completely understand me. Or at least know most of me. Okay. Cool. That one was easy. Yeah. What's your question for me? Um Who was your childhood best friend? <coughs> Probably my friend Jay. <coughs> my my childhood's pretty fuzzy though. My uh I don't remember a whole lot from my childhood. I remember certain pieces, but I mean, my memory is pretty bad anyway. I uh, I tend to not deliberately, but but I kind of get my memory of the people that are meaningful to me, <coughs> or or people that aren't, from um, the result of what those memories are that I don't remember anymore. Jay, Jay is somebody that I that if if I recall from my fuzzy memory is, is something that I that is some somebody that I hung out with a lot and we related to each other a lot. I remember us going through um, awkwardly going through little league together and and being at the same school and hanging out a lot, um, doing a lot of the same things. Uh, we drifted apart in high school. But uh, <coughs> why is that? Uh, kind of because I stole his girlfriend. <laughs> Only kind of. It, it ended up being more. It the, the the full story ended up being more complicated than that. But but to 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 the perception of a lot of people. And myself included for a while. Um, I, I, I was the, I was the primary instigator of him and his girlfriend breaking up. Hmm. In high school. Wow, this is a tough move. Maybe it's because you suck. Maybe you should be better. Maybe pause in your head. That's exactly where Paul wanted you to move. <coughs> Maybe you did. Oh wow, we're out of L shapes. I know. <laughs> it is unfortunate. I spent a bunch of I, I'm I spent a bunch of time at their house and got to know their parents and I, I I became friends with this with uh, Jay's younger brother too. <clears throat> I think that after that whole incident thing, even though he never really directly said anything about it, exactly a lot of this stuff was always uh, from from the friends group that became loyal to him. There was kind of a uh, his side versus my side thing, and his side was a lot greater than my side. Gotcha. But. Um, I, I think that I, I think that it caused us to drift apart a little bit. I don't know how much of that was me versus him uh, from, from that, but uh, <clears throat> but it, but it, it it caused a rift. And uh, I mean, we're fine now. We don't really talk, but I don't, right. I, don't, I don't actually talk to that many people from high school anymore. Gotcha. I didn't really find myself. I don't think I really found myself um, until college changed a lot in college but I feel like I did yeah that's fair no I didn't realize that you moved what'd you do you put that S shape in the upper left Move. I 
think that that was our last question, right? Yeah, that was it. Cool. Well, what we're have at? we reached on time? What's that? What have we reached on time? We're at about 50 minutes. So, uh, so that, that's pretty good. I think that uh, I'll let you think about your move and we'll finish this game out. I guess I'm not, you're not thinking about your move anymore. <laughs> I already thought about it. Wow. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, and part of it is I think you shouldn't have played first. Because the, the spot that I chose was on the 1x and 1o, but it was super biased uh, because of where it was placed versus if I had, if it was like translated up one and it was covering that o blank x blank rather than blank o blank x. I need to go back and review the tape. I, I, I think that I deliberately did that because I felt like it would be, it'd have been more advantageous for me, but I, I was only half paying attention. So. Neat. Be better, Mendel. <laughs> so yeah, that's. Uh, I think we're gonna wrap this up. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's Battle of Lits. I I still gotta. I mean, I think it would be a little different too if we were paying full attention to the game as opposed right. to listening to it at the same time but right. strategery games like this may uh, not necessarily be the most conducive to try to have conversation over top of it but I still but I, I still learned I guess uh, challenges our ability to multitask <laughs> but that's Battle of Wits I, I think it's pretty fun I, I might start to play it on this site a little more often uh, with random strangers or, or not but maybe not real time based I I I, I used to be a long, belong to a, another site that was a turn-based thing. This site does allow you to do turn-based, uh, where you can make one move a, t a day or two moves a day or do things like that or do some tournaments. Uh, so if you want to join the site and find me, I, I'm the Dark No Zero person on this thing. Uh, feel free to uh, try this game with me. There's other games on here too. Uh, a few of them I know, Some of them, I, uh, a bunch of them I don't. Uh, yeah. But that's the end of episode one. Yeah. And we're, the plan is to put one of these out every Sunday. And uh, I don't know what game we're going to do next week, but uh, we have a list and we'll pick something. So thanks for listening. That's it. Bye. Bye.